This is my first visit to Seward. It's awesome mountains everywhere, still a little snow around, some waterfalls. It's a seafood town, so that's why we chose to come here. Show off our boats. We've got two great owners, a 42 and a 46, and really nice people. They love their boats, and we're just here to do a little fishing. So, I mean, here we are in Seward Harbor, and I've got this really strange hole here that, um, that I discovered uh, one morning very hungover and tried to take some of my people out fishing and they wanted to fish for halibut. And I said, let's try here because it was so calm. And I anchored and I thought, there's no way they're going to get anything. <laughs> but I woke up three hours later and they go, well, we got seven. We need one more. And I was like, here? And they said, yeah, you, I mean, isn't this your spot? And I said, oh yeah, no, I was totally this is, confident. This is my favorite this. spot. It is now. I mean, every time I go there, I catch fish. And then you get into Harris Bay, there's halibut in here. Um, I don't know that I've ever caught anything in here, but this is just spectacular sightseeing. Yeah, get back to the really glacier is. back it there. Really is. Come on aboard, guys. I'm Ryan. Nice to meet you, Rick. Ryan, nice to see you. You are Matt. I'm Ryan. Nice to meet you, Matt. And you oh, are Richard. Richard. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> That's me, baby. I'm Ryan, Matt. dude. Good. Well, I was kind of born into it. Uh, I, I was born into a, a family that did charter and commercial fishing. I grew up around the water, spent every summer on the water. Uh, I had an excellent set of uh, grandparents and parents that, you know, totally involved my brother and I in that process. And as I got older, I actually wanted to be a commercial fisherman. And I approached my grandfather, who was about retirement age, to ask if I could buy one of his fish boats. And he said, you know, son, this is not the life you want to lead. And uh, in the last 15 years, I really got into boat building. I spent a bunch of time in New Zealand designing and helping build um, some offshore cruising uh, expedition yachts, bigger stuff out of aluminum. And I was really kind of looking to stay closer to home. I got a phone call from a friend of mine that uh, said, hey, Lindell Yachts is looking for somebody to take over as a general manager. And so that got me interested in the boat and I did a little research and you know, I'd, I'd heard of the Ocean Roamers and the Ocean Sports from uh, other people and they had a really good reputation. And uh, Jim Lindell has done a fabulous job with the boat over the years and he was just at the point where he was ready to kind of step back and here I am. I've got the uh, Lindell Yachts 42-foot um, navigator, and uh, I actually had a, an Ocean Sport 33 before this for eight years, and I love that boat. A friend of mine kind of talked me into purchasing that boat, and when the 42 came out, he went to the boat show, and he came back and he said, hey, Tom, you need to get one of these 42s. I ended up buying this. Actually, I put the down payment down before I ever even saw one. And then bringing the boat up from uh, Washington to Seward was really more of a kind of a work effort to, to get up here. We did some sightseeing, didn't do any fishing on that trip, but we did get to kind of put the boat through her paces. And we had some severe weather when we came across the Gulf of Alaska. And to me, it was a fantastic test of the boat's capabilities. I think that, um, uh, you know, it's, it's very impressive how well this boat handles the seas and the wind and the boat is, is bulletproof. I've been around boats my whole life since I was a little kid, you know, probably since before I was able to walk. So boating has been, always been an important part of my life. Uh, knowing about Lindell, and Brian Cott and Jim Lindell's background of being a master boat builder. I love building brands, I love building companies. It has to be, you know, top in category. That's the most important thing to me is representing a product that's really selling itself. And you're just a listener. You help the customer get exactly what their dream boat is. So we're on Ryan Bloom's uh, 46, which is a stretched 42. Uh, it gives you a lot bigger back deck, uh, increased water line length, 
makes it more efficient. Uh, and really what people love about the 46 is just the increase in the fishing space. So you've got this massive back deck that you can fish for just about anything on. The guys that fish tuna love the bigger deck. The guys that fish halibut love the bigger deck. And it's just a lot more room to do what you want to do with it. Alaska is uh, so rugged, it's indescribable. The people have a different frontier attitude up here. It's like they moved to Alaska for a short period and then they fall in love and they don't want to leave or they have to leave because of work and then they want to come back. I was born and raised in Seward and I couldn't wait to get out and once I got out I couldn't wait to come home. I love it here. It's a beautiful seaside town nestled into the mountains and it's, it's a sanctuary. Uh, Kevin's role is very easily defined. He is the chef. He prepares all the meals. Uh, he comes up with all the recipes. Hey chef, we came here last night and just had a fantastic dinner. Brought a couple local Seward folks with us and we were just blown away with the quality of your bar to table, seat to table food. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, <laughs> what are we gonna do today? Well, Kevin? we're gonna cook up some uh, king salmon. Absolutely beautiful fish and Honestly, we're going to cook it as simply as possible by cooking it over uh, local birch. And then when we cook ours, we cook it skin side down. Um, it does a few things. One, it crisps up that skin. This is a really nice oily king. Uh, hook and line caught. Last night, that piece of fish you served me was medium rare. So moist, it was like butter. Fantastic. All right, and so our accompaniment with the king salmon uh, is our lovely peanut potatoes that we had talked about earlier. I've already tossed them with a little bit of uh, canola oil, and I like to get a little crunch on the cut side. I love that crunch of the skin, but they were tender and kind of buttery inside. Fantastic. Yeah, they're they're one of my favorites. And I'm gonna go really gently, just right over. Uh, we've got a little uh, baby kale. And like I said, this is a warm potato salad. We have a nice little uh, juxtaposition of the warm potatoes and a little bit cooler uh, kale and that yummy uh, umami butter. How important is it for you to support your local sewer fishermen, making sure it's hook and line, that they're, they care as much about sustainability as you do? Um, I think Alaska does a really, really good job uh, with their sustainability. Yeah. Um, they have great fisheries, great fishery uh, management. We actually you know, put it in their state constitution absolutely. back in 55. Absolutely. Um, and so we made this nice beet barbecue sauce. It's a nice little addition to, uh, to what we have here. And we like to keep it pretty simple as far as presentation goes. So we're going to take our potatoes and the kale and just land them on the plate. Going right on top. You know, we like to garnish things. So this time we've just done a really simple, kind of a spicy uh, spicy pickle with the rhubarb. Used a little um, apple cider vinegar and a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of chipotle in there, just for some smokiness. And then uh, we have some lovely micro beet greens to kind of tie in with the fact that we're serving it with a beet barbecue sauce. What is something we can find in nature to serve at our restaurant? And if it's in season and it's out there, there's a good chance you'll find it on your plate. <laughs> you know, the older we get, the more, you know, we used to rough it and things like that, but now I think we deserve something like you know, well, it's, it's just too bad that I didn't start playing like my, I told my mom, but God rest her soul, you know, mom country waited about 10 or 15 years to have me because they forgot three zeros on my contract because I mean, you're into fishing and doing stuff and I was playing ball making the kind of money that they have. I could afford a boat like this. <laughs> and, but it's, it's, it's a great treat to be able to have an opportunity to come up here. But this Lindell boat is, it's, it's very special. I mean, it, it was worth the whole trip, even though we're not catching a lot of fish right now, which I'm a numbers guy by, you know that I like to score. So I like to catch a lot of fish. And so I appreciate the invitation to get a chance to 
to, to see this boat and, and to understand a little bit more about it because I've been on a lot of different boats fishing in my lifetime, but I've never been on a boat that's as luxurious as this. And the thing is, it's so quiet and it rides so well and it takes care of it. I mean, on our way out here to come to this incredible cove, it was it's a pretty good pretty good swell. It's going through some pretty good well, stuff. Stabilization. And the stabilization that they have inside of it, it's you get what you pay for in life, though. Yeah. I remember somebody told me one time, he said, remember, Rick, in life, said sometimes expensive is cheap in the long run. So if you get something really good, it lasts a long time. You get a lot of enjoyment out of it, and that's kind of the way it is, I think, with yeah. this with these Lindell boats. And I'm I'm glad I got to know about them, and hopefully I'll have an opportunity to to do some more fishing on it because going out in this, I could I can deal with this. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been coming up to Alaska? I've been coming up now for 12 to 15 years. This is truly the last frontier, and when you come out here, you can just get away from all of the chaos. Here's a toast to Alaska and the beauty that God has given us and that we're blessed to all be here together. And now let's hope that the fish start biting. There and to the, to the new friends that we've developed on the Alaska, Lindell Yacht. The final frontier. <laughs> yeah, baby. Here's just going. Here's just going. Next jump, hey, buddy. buddy. Let's on there. There, I think I'm All right. My first halibut. No, no, I need a bag. Nice. Nice one. Nice. Nice job, Rick. So you've driven this thing significantly from what, the state of Washington all the way up here to Alaska all the time? Several times, yeah. So, yep. so give me your feelings about this boat compared to other boats that you've had. Well, it's it's uh, <laughs> definitely the most luxurious boat I've, I've ever owned. and I've, I've owned a couple of them. But I started working with, with Brian Cotton and, and Mark um, on on what I wanted in this boat. And they, actually, they build custom boats. Um, and so we started looking at vacuum sealers and fish processing and the easiest way to handle fish when we when we got them on the boat. And we typically, you know, we do a lot of halibut fishing. Um, so we're looking at halibut between 80 and 200 and something pounds. And you gotta be able to deal with that sort of fish. It's, it's I mean, you've seen it, they're, they're animals when they come on. Yeah. So we, we set up the boat with a bigger swim step so, so I could go out and deal with the fish. Um, we've got extra Berlin holders in here. Um, Filet tables, uh, and, and Mark and uh, the company have, have just set things up on the inside, kind of to what I wanted. I wanted an ice maker on here, and a couple different freezers, and we got two refrigerators. Um, so having spent quite a bit of time on a boat I, and doing a lot of fishing, I kind of knew what I wanted. So I started talking to them about a year before they actually started building the boat, and they pretty much built everything exactly the way that I wanted it. Mark comes up and fishes with me every year, and we tweak things, and they get ideas, and I've got ideas. And it allows oh, us to come, come out, out and see this. Come look at this. It allows us to come out and see this. I mean, you also can't see this most in a lot of places in the world. <laughs> this is this is special, unbelievable, luxury fishing. That's what it is. quality. I mean, the workmanship, the DNA is in a commercial Alaskan fishing background. We're implementing new technology. We can put solar panels on, we can put lithium battery packs in, and that combined with our uh, fuel efficient engines is helping the environment. We partner with Volvo Penta. We've got an IPS system that's just super Maneuverable, can spin on a dime. Uh, Garmin system is all fully integrated. Joystick steering, fly-by-wire. Uh, so it really gives you so much information. The technology is, you know, almost as intuitive as an Apple product. It's a very comfortable boat that is very fast and gets you places that you want to go very comfortably. If there was a, uh, <laughs> I hate to say this, but if there was a boat building god for Southeast Alaska, it, it would be Jim Lindell.
Uh, but Jim was just in, in it for the love of building the boat. And that's really how, you know, how much respect I have for Jim. To find somebody that did it for the love is pretty unique. So, have you guys ever had a Pleistoise cocktail? It's made with glacier ice, so it's like 10,000 years old. Wow. But it makes for a good cocktail. Hope everyone likes ice.